This show is sponsored by Visage Paranormal. For regular listeners of the show, you will have heard us mention this awesome paranormal investigation team a few times before. Well, we can now announce them as our official sponsor. Visage Paranormal offers ghost hunting events around Yorkshire and the Midlands with the possibility of going further afield in the future. When you attend one of their events, you will come as strangers and leave as friends. You will never be forced to do anything you don't want to, and they can always accommodate anyone. You will have the chance to use some of the latest gadgets during the night, or go old school and use your own senses. They welcome anyone over the age of 18, whether you're a sceptic or a believer. No gimmicks, no fakery, no BS. And as our sponsors, they are offering our listeners an exclusive 10% discount. Just use code PARAVERSE at the checkout. Visit their website at www.visageparanormal.co.uk and get yourself on one of their upcoming hunts. Who knows, perhaps you'll even see us there too. Hello. It's been a while. We're actually live. This hasn't happened in a few weeks. Oh, how's everyone doing? Uh, I've seen a few. I think I'm assuming that's Luna. He's still coming up as Facebook user. I don't know why. I know you've already done it, but anyone else? If uh, if you haven't already, if you're watching through Uprising, if you go to the top of the link, there's a thing that says streamyard.com slash Facebook. Click on there. Otherwise, your comments will look like this. I can't see who anyone is. Everyone says Facebook user. There's only Chris. Hi, Chris. See? I can see Chris. I know Chris is here. So did everyone like the new uh, everyone like the new intro? Thought I'd change it up a little bit. New start and all that. Just me. I'm a Todd. Although I won't be on my Todd for long, as I do have a guest sitting there patiently waiting. So I'll uh see what. I'll wait for a few more people to pop in. There we go. Luna's done it. Yeah, still, everyone's just saying, I don't know what it's doing, because I know most of you have probably already done this, but do it again. I don't know why it's doing it. So, evening, whoever, Facebook user, I can't see who anyone is, but um, so yeah, might as well uh, bring in the guest. So, uh, I think anyone that's watched the show we did um your stories where we got you lot all on tell us all the creepy things you've had going on uh terry was one of the guests on that show and he was actually like the most popular guest everyone was talking texting or messaging me and commenting saying they wanted to hear more about his stories so i was like you know what i need to get him in and gone yeah you're also a facebook user still a facebook user i don't know who anyone is i want to say hi to everyone but so if you're watching through Uprising, right at the top, if you come off the video, right at the top in the description, right at the bottom of the description, it'll say, give StreamYard permission uh, with a link, streamyard.com slash Facebook. Click that, and I'll be able to see who you are again. There we go. Emily's done it. Yeah, I can see everyone. Well, I can't see everyone. I can see a few. Right then, so let's uh, bring Terry in so I'm not talking to myself and Facebook user. Hi, hi. We just do Good evening. There we go. That's better. Made a little thing for us. There we go. In case anyone doesn't know who you are. <laughs> hang on, hang on. There we go. I feel a bit too high. There we go. That's better. Just oh, adjust yourself. Yeah. How have you been since we last? Not year? bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh keeping keeping going with everything that's going on at the minute. Yeah, it's just one thing after another, isn't it? Crazy old world, eh? It's never ending. There we go. So I'm just looking through the comments. More and more people, I can see your names. There we go. Oh, there you go. There you go, you've done it, Joe. So, for anyone that doesn't know, anyone that didn't see the last show, would you like to <clears> introduce <throat> yourself, tell everyone what you do? what your speciality is, what you'd like to talk about. Well, uh, my name's Terry. 
I live down here in the southeast of England. Um, I actually work on the, and a lot, a lot of you are going to like me saying this, but I actually work on the roads, doing the road maintenance and shutting things down and, you know, <laughs> keeping everybody in right, traffic. Get him off. Get him off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I'm a cone, cone monkey for a living. So that's what I do. And I work nights. Um, sort of uh, got into the paranormal from quite a young age, really. I was probably, well, as far as I remember, it was sort of year seven when I was about sort of 13 years old. I was um, in the school library and um, just looking through some books. So I'm going to admit, I didn't have many friends at school. I came from a different school and a different background. So I walked into like the wolf's like, layer. I didn't know anyone there and I was like the oddball. So I thought, you know, so I was just <clears> hanging around in the school library and um, picked up my first um, ghost book and UFO books. This happens to be in the corner. Started reading it, looking mainly, mainly through the pictures and sort of mm -hmm. took an interest in it. And a guy called Neil Young, who um, was in a year above me, uh, came in and sort of saw me looking at the books in the library sort of like later on. He goes, oh, do you want to look at something? I was like, yeah, go on then, you know. And he said, I've got this. And he showed me a photo of a um, a triangle um, UFO, which he had right. taken. And um, I, was, I was only a young teenager then, so I didn't know what to think of it. You know, I was just like, well, you know, that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, but since then, it's just got me really interested. And, in, well, I used to live in Farnborough. Um, when I was a kid, we used to stay on the field till late and play out till late. And um, we used to get Concord fly over. And ever since that photo, when I saw the triangle lights of Concord, I was always looking up yeah. and <laughs> sort of. But yeah, yeah. I just saw always an in, and I had an interest since then, really. Yeah, you don't stop looking up once you start, do you? To be honest, um, being on the roads, I mean, I, I start at seven in the evening and I finish sometimes at seven in the morning. And the other lads are there, you know, it's mainly maintenance jobs. You sort of just sit there all night and shut the road i mean the guys that are working are normally five or six miles down the, down the motorway mm -hmm. and you're just shutting the sit road and um i, I spend the to be honest I, I i wander off in the evenings you know you've got to save a whole m4 the m3 to yourself it's pitch black especially during lockdown and i was just wandering yeah. off on my own I was, i'll see you later <laughs> so i've got to go and go and sky watching you know and used to see yeah. those shooting stars a lot See, this is this is why the roads are closed for so long, guys. He's just yeah. admitted it. They're all wandering off. If, if you drive past, if, if you see me on the road, you'll see me wandering off somewhere, going, you know, what's he doing? <laughs> this is yeah. Cool. You ever see anyone on the road doing maintenance and that? Oh, he's obviously going to do something important. He's not. He's going off sky, sky watching. watching. Yeah, yeah, that's me. Don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, it's one of those. Once you once you get interested, there's so many little little areas that like. You can be interested in UFOs to start with, but then you'll find one little, one little part of the the subject. There's so many facets to it that you'll you'll find oh, that's really interesting, and then you'll get a theory and think oh that's also really interesting, and then you know, like five years later you're wearing your tin foil hat and no one will come near you because you know you're the no. the town crazy person. Exactly. I mean, I was just I was down there at my wife's uh, parents' house. And um, she's sort of saying, oh, he's got a podcast tonight. And, you know, and they're sort of saying, oh, what's all that about? And you, as soon as you mentioned paranormal, they're like, oh. <laughs> it's just like, oh, right. But, um, yeah, yeah she's, she fully supports me. So she's quite proud to sort of say, you know, he's doing this. And he looks into that. And, and she follows yeah. me as well. You know, she loves coming on locations. And when I visit places, she'll come along. So I'm lucky mm -hmm. to have her, really. Yeah. Most people I'm think lucky, you're just uh, army. <laughs> yeah. I'm lucky, yeah. Uh... Luna's just as crazy into all these. I think she's more paranormal on more UFOs, but we like to kind of meet in the middle. And that's why we've a lot of our theories are that maybe not that not that they're the same thing, but maybe that the way the paranormal works explains the way that maybe multi-dimensional UFOs and aliens are moving, that maybe the the physics is the same, maybe. So uh lots and lots of strange conversations had at three o'clock in the morning mm. it's, uh, it's always good that it's not just me rambling to myself and everyone else just like mm -hmm, you're you're crazy <laughs> i think the um where you say on the well being sort of like the same sort of thing i don't think there's far much in it really i mean um i would say i've I sort of fairly even go through the stories i'm going to tell and that all that but um 
I think that there is another sort of dimension or a reality at ones along our own. And mm. whether it's based on a frequency or vibrations or mm. whichever, they tend to filter through to our reality. And yeah. if we're lucky enough, we happen to see them. But um, mm. yeah, I do believe it's sort of a multi-dimensional sort of theory. I think there is yeah. something out there in it. And I think it's a science yeah. that we're never, like I said before, I, I don't think we'll ever figure it out. But it's definitely yeah. something in it. I think definitely, if, if, I think we've mentioned it loads of times on this show. If if there is at least one more physical dimension, we, I, I don't think we'd ever actually be able to prove it, prove it definitively, because we can't perceive any of it. So mm. all of our measurements of the universe are based on a three dimensional universe, and they prove the three dimensional universe because that's all we can see. Yeah. If there was more then our entire understanding of physics is wrong and time, but we can't ever prove it, which is annoying. But with just that, just there being at least one more physical dimension could explain not just the paranormal and UFOs and all the pseudoscience, because it could even explain things like the Loch Ness Monster and Bigfoot. Where mm. are they? Why can't, why don't people see them all the time? They're there, but maybe they, you know, they're in a different dimension and we can't always see them. But it also explained things that physics are struggling to explain with dark matter and dark energy. Well, these things are, are there, but we can't see them. Maybe it's because of a, a different dimension that we can't perceive. So it, it generally, for all the scientists that have been looking for one theory that solves everything, that's about as close as I think we're going to get of maybe explaining everything in one theory. But again, we can't prove it, which obviously science doesn't like theories that you can't prove. No, there's got to be something physically to sort of show that this exists. Mm. There you go. You know, it's like, yeah. I, 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 I say, I mean, I'm, I was born Christian and um, I've, through my own decision, I've decided to turn atheist literally on the basis that <clears throat> I don't know if there's a God there. I've never seen him. Mm -hmm. But then that's that thing where you sort of like, there's got to be something there to prove it. So mm -hmm. now I'd sort of look at myself where I'm saying, you know, how do I know there's not a God? There, there could be some sort of powerful force out there. So who am I to say it doesn't exist? But just because mm -hmm. I haven't seen it, but that's why I used yeah. to think about it. You know, I can't mm -hmm. see it. I don't believe in it. And it's just like, but I believe in all these other things, you know, like mm -hmm. the ghosts and that. So, Who's to say that, yeah. you know, there's no such thing as God? Who who knows, you know? So I decided to stay yeah. atheist for that reason, because <laughs> I don't yeah. know. <clears throat> I think it's one of those, we look at lots of evidence, so evidence, because some of it's just circumstantial. Someone said it, and we we like to think that it's true because it leads into what we believe, and it, it gives credence to things that we want them to be true. Mm. But with looking at religion, there are so many religions throughout exactly you know human history and i think um ricky gervais said it if all human knowledge was destroyed overnight all memory of it everything destroyed in 2000 years we'd have religion again but all the religions would be completely different the chances that anyone would be talking about jesus and like it wouldn't happen but all the science would be exactly the same because the answer is, you know, it's true, it's fact. Eventually, we'd figure out how to figure it out. Mm. But with the way that we look at a lot of paranormal um, evidence or UFO evidence, if we were looking for evidence of a religion, the fact that so many people have believed in a God of one form or another could be proof that there is something out there, something that, maybe not created heaven and hell or anything like that. All the details we've probably got wrong, but there could be something, whether it be a physical God, whether it be the universe itself, whether it, whatever the universe is inside of, I don't know. That's another thing that maybe we'll never actually prove, but it's all uh, just adds to the headache. That I, when yeah. I'm sitting there trying to trying to solve all of these little riddles in my head, it just hurts a lot. <laughs> or it it's all aliens. Aliens brought us here. Aliens are the 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 cause of everything. Who knows? 
it's uh yeah it makes your mind boggle doesn't it <laughs> it's, it's, it's even thinking about it is yeah it's crazy yeah just having a, a quick look through all the comments chris saying uh all science is guesswork until proven that's why i don't listen to science yeah but it, it's usually proven with lots of proof as opposed to just one piece of evidence and then they go oh yeah that must be it but um yeah i kind of get what you think uh that's this one what about karma huge believer no explanation how it works but it does that's again that's just like energy being put out you put out bad energy you attract bad energy you put out good energy you attract good energy that's all like vibrational and things like that so there's a lot of again it's all stuff that scientists would tell you is pseudoscience and nonsense but they also would happily explain how vibrational energy works across the universe but when you start trying to apply it to things like the paranormal they're all like no that's pseudoscience that doesn't that doesn't exist but it but it's using their own science so it, i don't get how they can uh, say it's nonsense so quickly no uh, yeah i think james and chris are just talking about different forms of science like classified science the stuff that they make a discovery and people the powers that be are like yeah no one's going to be able to see that we need to keep that it's like things like bluetooth isn't it i mean it can send information from one device to another just out there in like wireless technology and that's mm. sort of slowly given to us over a period of you know a decade or a few decades all, all of a sudden we've got this <clears throat> i mean you know it's like the guy that said you know i think he worked for area 51 or something and he says you know we've got technologies in the desert where we can go to mars you know if we wanted yeah. to and that's decades old you know and, yeah. and, and you've got scientists like are they just saying that i don't know but mm. it's when you work out how far we've come, it's this, and what we've got, you know, it's this. Yeah. So with um, <clears> with <throat> drones, I've got a drone in the porch, and I'm being told that that's the best technology the US military have got. Obviously, theirs yeah. are a little bit better than mine, but are you telling me that the US military, the thing that has more money spent on it than most other countries have for everything, that's the best technology they've got. Don't believe it. So <laughs> I won't, we're only being told, oh, look at this cool drone technology. It's obsolete now. They don't need it. And that's why we're allowed to know about it, because it's it's useless to them now. Any new technology, they have to go through the patent office. They The government get to see anything that's being declared. They look at it and think, we'll have that. Tell them to shut up. Speak about it, and you'll be done for treason or whatever it is over there and it they're silenced well, i think i mentioned it um a couple of shows ago the guy that um figured out how to run a car on water yeah he was on the news and everything he proved it applied for a patent whole thing disappeared like, your energy because because the government a lot no that's going to cost us too much money you ain't having that and just shut it down and you go back so, to tests like uh, Nicholas Tesla and all his mm. ideas, and then yeah. you go back to like how many of the when his when his house was um uh, was it the FBI raided his house yeah. or, or after the, his death? Yeah, the FBI, the CIA, yeah, any three letter, everything. any three letter group you can think of, they were all there arguing over who got to keep what. Yeah, took it all but away. They, they all made out that he was crazy and that none of his. Um, none of his inventions were worth anything, and yet they all rushed in there to steal his stuff the second he died. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's the um, lots and lots of people have said if we could, if the stuff that he wanted to do and his ideas were actually realized and released into the public, like his free energy and things like this, we'd be at least a hundred years more advanced than we are now. Yeah, <clears throat> but you can't, you can't tax free energy, can you? You can't make money from cars that run on water. No, <clears throat> it's all about the oil, yeah. <laughs> it's all money, wars, everything else. It's just all brought into yeah. it. Unfortunately, it's a sad truth. So, before I'm assuming 
the most of this show we're going to end up talking about the paranormal because that's I think that's both of our especially your main your main love of these subjects but um yes before we get started did you see have you seen any of the new reports that have come out in the last few days about uh UFOs from the, the Pentagon do you know what I had a look earlier uh, this morning because I really haven't sort of looked into it lately because I've had a bit of a busy month this month at work so um mm. I've had to put it all in a bit of a back burner to be honest but um mm. I had a quick flip through this morning and I didn't really see anything that stood out yeah I know they've they've said that um there's um evidence that these sightings people that have had these sightings of UFOs have had physical effects anything from memory loss time loss to brain damage paralysis um radiate radiation burns and things like that and they now think i think the general consensus is none of it is done on purpose it's just a case of um i think lou, El lou elizondo explained it in an interview it'd be like you going to stand behind a fighter jet while they turn it on not knowing what it's going to do you're going to get at least burnt you're going to get deafened you they didn't do it to you you just got too close to the wrong part of the to the wrong part of the aircraft so they think that this is the same kind of thing it's just sort of accidentally the effects of being too close to these things but again there it's more and more proof now that they're taking these things seriously that they're not pseudoscience it's a thing they are here they are visiting and they are accidentally or not injuring people and the fact yeah. that they've mentioned missing time <clears throat> also leads into a lot of the contact cases where people claim to have not remembered anything but they've got four hours missing out of their day all of a sudden so how many of these people i think there was 300 or 340 on this report excuse me that um had claimed that they'd got some kind of ill effect how many of those had been abducted for want of a better word without knowing and they, they've had missing time so it's it's just slowly becoming something that science is actually looking at and taking seriously for once so it's um it's a very very interesting time to be into the ufo subject because it's not just us sitting here and talking to ourselves in a tiny little podcast we've actually got scientists and people that not assuming the people at the cia and the pentagon weren't already taking it seriously but if they weren't they are now yeah so um I just, I just think that they've known about all this for quite a long time, and it's mm. just like we said earlier, it's it's coming to light now. Um, mainly because of, I think it was the New York Times that was it released for Tic Tac information, yeah. wasn't it? And ever since then, I think everyone's just jumped on board. But um, <clears throat> it's independent researchers like ourselves that do these sort of chats yeah. and that, and I think it's more people will come out and sort of look into it if more people talk about it but yeah. i think as mainstream goes it's i can't sit there like i've watched like with national geographic and i'll see like something on the skinwalker ranch or yeah. something i i don't take an interest in it but i do take an interest in it but i don't watch mm. the tv show i would read like george yeah. Knapp's book i'm reading at the minute yeah. on it and all the stuff that's going on there and then I, there's another another book out someone else wrote that said that when the NIDS team went there, nothing happened at all. It was literally mm. just a, a dead case, and that's why they packed yeah. up and went. Are they just saying that, or did stuff happen? But when you mm. speak to other researchers, they say, well, no, NIDS got this, and there is footage out there, which mm. I think is on YouTube, or strange things. And they say, oh, yeah, we did catch this, so who do you believe? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a bit of a smoke screen, really. But mm. not, not that I don't believe anything at Skinwalker. Mm. It's just like with like the hunt for a skinwalker on the tv show it's a bit too mm. we're firing lasers off there and you know i don't yeah. know if that's with tv or not but <clears throat> yeah there's a lot of a lot of drama stuff. yeah i watched the um the first two series of curse of skinwalker ranch yeah and 
each shows probably about 45 minutes and there's about eight episodes per series and they could probably fit all of their actual evidence into one show but they've yeah. dragged it out over eight with all the drama toys like they see something in the sky then suddenly they're back in the studio and they're talking we saw this thing in the sky like just show me the bloody thing in the sky man what are you doing yeah. don't stop to tell me that you saw it just show it me so it's just i'll just kind of wait to the end and just watch a summary or something because like they really do drag these things out it but does i, I mean <clears throat> if you want to watch a documentary and i, I highly recommend it and uh, i don't know if it's still on amazon it might be on youtube it's called Lights in the Sky, and it's um, a, 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 I can't remember what she directed. She directed like uh, like another direct documentary, but she's quite like an independent filmmaker. And it was on Amazon, and um, I watched it, and it's literally real footage of lights in the sky, um, similar to what we see photos of what someone would mm -hmm. post on, say, Paranormal Uprising. Oh, I've seen this, taken a photo of it. She's done it and it, and she's brought a whole new load of researchers to the table. Um, a couple which I've actually bought the books of, and exactly the same writing about these strange lights, where they come from. And it's similar mm. to what we see is odd in the sky, it's like flashing light. And she sort of talks about how they mimic aircraft in a way, but they're not aircraft. Mm. And the way she goes into it, she she sort of shows you the um like the flight map or something like that. There's not an airplane there, but there's flashing lights there, or she can prove it basically. And it mm -hmm. it's quite an interesting documentary. As you have to really see it to sort of believe yeah, what start, you're watching. I'll look it up, make yeah, sure I'm lights in the sky. It's a you know, it's it's got me to buy other books and read into other things like USOs, for example. Yeah. Um the interesting one was the lights over the sea. Um oh, there we go. Chris has just shared the link for anyone that wants to watch it. That's the one. Amazon. There you go. That's I'll a good on one. Yeah. But it's those sort of things I watch because mm. it's more interesting. It's what someone else having yeah. a go at it and not going you're going to it like Roswell or you know, Rendlesham and we're, we're making a big mm. fuss about it because that's all been and done. Um, in my yeah. opinion, anyway. I mean, there's so much yeah. not there's nothing still going on there. So everyone's mm. just focused on these areas, but there's another guy in Australia. Um, I can't remember his name, so I do apologise. But he's uh, he's the same thing. I can post the link on the page. I will. Um, again, he's filmed these things all his life in Australia, mm. and they did two films. They did one on his um, theories, beliefs, and videos he's captured, and they did another one. The same guy brought him to the field, and they actually did one on the the lights in the um, oh. It's a, when you go live, you can't think, and <laughs> it's uh, yeah, oh, it's well known lights in Australia, but mm. the ghost lights, um, yeah, which is seen out there, and it's uh, Mim 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 lights, mm. that's it, in Australia, and like these ghost lights that appear, and it's actually over a grave out there, which is uh, sort of this gravestone, um, there's mm. a, a like a shack not too far, and people have driven back past this grave site. And they, these lights have just chased them, and they just think they're headlights from a car, but they just take them and they disappear. And next thing you know, they're in front of a car taking off. I mean, they're mm. like over here somewhere, and they so they're interacting with the car, and no one can explain it exactly with the um the lights. Is it Norway? The Hestalen lights. Yeah, another famous one, similar to that. But when you watch these films, mm. um, so I'll try and post a link you just sort of think wow you know these people are actually going out there and filming it on their yeah. cameras and made a little film about it and it's, it's more interesting i find anyway yeah. yeah i think that's generally why i won't form an opinion on most of these historic cases like Rendlesham or area 51 or roswell or anything i haven't investigated it myself i don't like to take other people's word for something because mm. I don't know what a, what agenda they've got. Like, do they have a book out? Do they have a documentary they're peddling? Do they have um, something else that they want you to like with the the Skinwalker Ranch series on Discovery? They've got a whole series. They want you know they want you to keep watching. If they just told you everything in one hour, it wouldn't be worth it. So they need to get money out of you. So it's something like skinwalker ranch there's 
the fact that so many people have seen things and that so many people have investigated it, big groups, small groups, um, individual investigators on their own have gone out and seen strange things. It'd be worth, if I ever had the opportunity, I'd take the opportunity to investigate it myself. Mm. But I wouldn't take anyone else's word for any of the evidence that they've got. Because some of it is so daft. You know what I mean? Like, they kind of big it up as, oh, this, I'm watching the, the, the Curse of Skinwalker Ranch, they took a, um, a still shot from one of the security cameras of this black thing in the sky. And they're like, what's that? It was there one minute and not there the next. But it literally looked like a fly just flying past the camera. Yeah. They were bigging it up as evidence of UFOs at Skinwalker Ranch. So that's not evidence of anything. <laughs> No, that could be anything. You're not being sceptical enough. So it's just so many little bits of um, of evidence that are like that. And I'm just like, that's not enough for me. I'd need to see more concrete evidence. So I just need to, I'd, yeah, I'd, I'd, anything I'd love to research myself and not just by reading other people's research. But I don't have the money to fly out there and do all these scientific experiments and studies so i'll just kind of leave them to it well my my brother went on um, <clears throat> a trip to las vegas he went to out to area 51 this is mm. sort of late 90s a group of friends of his and he, he went to the little alien in and he, he sort of mm. did the whole you know the whole experience and he said go out there and he said very not to the gate they didn't see any camo dudes or anything and um they just you stood there waiting for the camo dudes to sort of come up. And um, mm. so there's all the sensors around. But he said, um, after about a couple of hours of stood in the desert, they was sort of like, right, well, nothing much is happening. And mm. all of a sudden, I think an Apache helicopter flew over. I don't think there's anything to do with what, why they're there or anything. Mm. But um, then they appeared literally up on the hillside. They just stood there watching them. And yeah. he's, but he said it's more of a buzz <coughs> thing. And again, yeah. the tourist trade out there, they try and sell it to you like, Come on, you know, we go out there and we spook you up and nothing much yeah. happens. Yeah. I is think this, is this a base or thing? It's a very top secret. Yeah. What goes on there, I we think, don't know. But yeah, I think if Area 51 was anything to do with UFOs, it's not going to be anymore. It's so many, it's like world famous now. It'd be stupid yeah. to keep all of their top secret anything in there because someone you, you can't test fly a ufo with an in an area surrounded by tourists who've gone there to try to see you flying a ufo you do anything they're going to get a picture of it or anything i think so now it's it's literally just a tourist like, look we keep everything in area 51 go over there and like yeah, kind yeah, of keep look. your attention away from where they're actually testing these things mm. so but i still want to go because it's area 51 you've kind of got to go exactly I mean, yeah i've got to go there i've got to go to roswell I've got to i'm going to hopefully I was, I was hoping to do it this year but it might end up being next year now we want to do a um a camp over at randlesham yeah go and spend the weekend in the forest i'm not expecting a ufo to come and join us but still it's randlesham you've got to go it's one of those one of those things now so it's going to be i'm done. not too i'm not i think i'm about an hour just roughly about an hour and 30 minutes away from there, I think. So, um, further, further east than where I am mm. now. But sort of like, you sort of go south around London and keep heading that way. I think it's down in the corner there. Um, but apparently, again, I, I don't not take an interest in it. I do. Um, mm. I just can't sit and listen to that, that colonel babble on again about, you know, mm. when he's invited onto a podcast and I've got this state recording plays it over again. Um, I like reading the books on it like other research they've done and there's um yeah. a couple down there's a famous again i can't remember her name it's just gone out of my head but there's two people that go down there and they investigate and they said they've seen things from big cats to things in the trees and you know mm. ghosts and stuff all, all going on down there yeah. so i don't know it's an area of high activity um but they're down there quite a lot and they record mm. quite a few things mm. so yeah that is on my map of things to see um yeah. this year I'm actually last year we headed up to uh North Devon mm. um family holiday but where we go normally um I don't know if it's by coincidence or what but we went uh, the year before we went to Cornwall um not Cornwall Kent sorry 
um for a family trip and it was down in um oh i can't remember the bloody name um it's a is it pluckley it's one of the yeah, most haunted pluckley. village pluckley that's it one of the most yeah. haunted villages in the uk didn't know about yeah. it when we got there i researched it and i was like oh my god you know we, we're here in the most haunted place spent the week there had a look around and it is a very old village and it's mm. interesting this year yeah. uh sorry last year we went down to north devon and we also went up to derbyshire and we walked around the it's um uh what's the name it's, there's some old caves of, oh, oh it's got a really strange name but it's, mm. it's pretty ice age and they used to have yeah. like high knees and stuff there and they've got rich quite uh carvings on the walls mm. and um when we went in there I, I, I really wanted to go in these caves and have a look but they didn't have any slots available and yeah. it's my birthday week my missus wanted to you know i took a big interest and she said you know i can't get you in on that one and then she found me a spot and i actually declined it because she couldn't come with me because she takes an interest she's got yeah. my wife my wife's got a big interest in riches so um she's more into that magical side of things mm. and more paranormal but yeah. I said you can't come, so I won't go. So I missed out on that. But we're going to go back there, and they're like um, old cave drawings of witch marks. Mm -hmm. and we also went up to the Stone Circle up there. Um, I think it's the Seven Sisters. And it's a big circle, and in the middle of nowhere. But um, the Druids were there when we went, and they were sort of doing their sort of like um, gathering. So they had like all stood around. I don't know if you just saw that, but. <laughs> <laughs> no honestly but this house is strange I've, I've written about it so many times on facebook we've got odd mm. things going on in here flashy lights knocking banging the lot um yeah i will warn you the light next to me will go off in a bit but it's the dragon the, the bearded dragon's tanks on the timer it's not oh, okay <laughs> uh, I, if you see something here flash it, it wouldn't surprise it probably me is paranormal <laughs> well i'll go on to that in a bit because uh it's mm. actually happened we bought something from a charity shop, believe it or not. And I think that's where this energy has come from. Um, yeah. We were going to that in a bit. So it's a bit long winded. Yeah. But yeah, we're into. Of, um, uh, speaking of odd places, are you coming to the Skywatch in Canuck? Um, I'll two. try. Um, I would like to. Three weeks, 30th, wherever Third many days, three. days weeks, days. I'll have to check my road. So I'm, I'm just literally mm. booked into every night at the minute. I've got tomorrow off i've got a new boiler being fitted and i've got my wife's granddad's 90th to go to so i've got monday off and then back to work so if i can get the time yeah. mate I'll, I'll pop up cool, thanks. but yeah it's uh definitely it's another one of those places that's got a little bit of everything it's got ghosts it's got the pig man it's got black eyed children it's got ufo sightings it's got the only thing it doesn't seem to have is the chupacabra everything else it's apparently been seen there i'm pretty certain they've got a um a bigfoot sighting at some point so <clears throat> you'll definitely see something again does that bring it all in you know to that available one sort of thing and they will come through mm -hmm. the same sort of universe or who knows all hopefully they all come out place. at the same time yeah hopefully yeah. they'll all come out while we're there well not all at the same time jesus i'm gonna be terrified <laughs> be all these things running at one spot <laughs> yeah jesus Let's have a look through the comments. Callum from Dark Paranormal. Evening. Uh, Chris said he thinks he's been in those caves in uh, Derbyshire. I'll Google it um, Chris, just quickly. Yeah, I'll definitely. It's a definitely one I want to go. I think that that would definitely be. Oh yeah. Luna said werewolves have been seen in Canuck as well. Why not throw the werewolves in? <clears throat> but um, I don't know if anyone's um, a friend of mine she's used to live on the chase mm. and she's quite interested she's probably listening to the chat and she probably write a comment hopefully but she's not busy um but her and her husband and her family were plagued by strangeness up there and um she used to send me photos on snapchat with strange things going on and um she said a while ago when they first moved up that area they had a sort of a black triangle fly over and it sort of like buzzed the house quite high up and it came back literally lower than it was you know, it was harping the sky when it sort of came back on them and they sort of said it was sitting around the area for quite some time and they sort of had that feeling it was watching them mm. and um she had a few interesting 
stories on the on the chase. We have to uh, see whether she wants to come join us on the on the Sky Watch. I don't think she's too far actually. Hmm. Think anyone that's up. got uh, anyone that's got some stories of things that have been seen in the actual area would be perfect, because otherwise it'll just be us telling about. Because obviously I used to live not too far away from Canuck. It was about 30, 40 minute drive away, depending on which way you went. But um, closer to Warsaw. But um, yeah. obviously, if I saw anything, that's not exactly over Canuck, is it? So, like, obviously, if there's someone that lived either on or near the chase, that'd be perfect. So, although we've had, uh, obviously, living near it ish, I know quite a few people that live closer that have had odd stories so i'll just be telling second hand stories so uh anyone that can come and tell us first hand stories would be perfect okay stacy reese fell over a fence there okay that's not really paranormal is it <laughs> that's more something i'd do it could be a that's ghost normal. fence who knows <laughs> yeah maybe it was maybe the fence was a, a trans-dimensional fence the aliens put it there. I'm not saying it was the aliens, but it was the aliens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, definitely looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. Got, I'll say uh, another thing. Um, if anyone lives near uh, in Devon, um, is the Rich Museum. That's an interesting one to visit. We visited that mm. last year. Um, that's got everything from like magic, like wizards mm. to witches. And it's more, as you go towards the end of the museum it's the dark arts and mm -hmm. mixed arts and it's interesting how they use things like sticks and stones and just natural mm -hmm. energies and this is going back to sort of contacting otherworldly beings and things mm -hmm. so they sort of use this resources they've got in the ground like sand like sand and dirt and mix it together and they they could sort of like create things and magic and mm. it's really interesting it's really worth paying mm. a visit it's only a little museum it's shut most yeah. of the year it's only open during the tourist seasons mm. but it's really worth a I visit think, there i think that museum's actually on the list of the top 10 most haunted places in the country purely mm. because of what's in it like not necessarily that the building was haunted but that the things that have been brought into the museum may carry spirits or attract spirits or something but again well it's I'd actually i have to investigate it myself it's relocated to a different location um mainly purely the fact is that it i think it was the fact that the museum entrance sort of faced north and mm -hmm. um certain points in the museum sort of pointed out like the star and that's why they put it there and um maybe that was to attract the energies on what's in mm -hmm. there in the exhibits but there's a dark section towards the back and it's like um there's good and bad magic i think it concentrates more on the history of the dark arts but yeah it is quite interesting how there's stories there as well of like black dogs and how they're associated with this sort of supernatural energy and yeah. um and you look at reports today of like uh black dogs and like these dogmen and you just wonder is it the sort of same sort of thing could be mm yeah i think black dogs as well there's so many stories of that because obviously we've done shows on like um cryptozoology and things like that there's so many tales of black dogs throughout the years around the country and a lot of the time it is in areas that have also had a lot of um history of witches and witchcraft and the witch trials and things like that throughout the years so mm. maybe there is a link but um, but yeah, I think that's one of those things that people kind of misinterpret a lot of the times. That, you know, like with dark magic and things like that. It's 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 not necessarily the magic that's dark. It's the intentions of the person using it. So if you're trying to do something bad to someone, then it's it's a you're doing dark magic. It's not necessarily the you know the the magic itself. It's more the the person using it. But um, mm. just don't. Just don't piss off any angry, mean witches because they'll fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> I do not want my name going in a jar full of dog shit and nails and being buried in the garden set on fire. So, I don't so, I know about that shit. You know what I mean? No, don't piss them off. Or of Newt and things like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, <clears throat> definitely not. 
Yeah. Is the black dog isn't the black dog a bad thing to say or a warning? I might be wrong. I think it depends on the story. Sometimes it's um um a warning as in something bad might be about to happen. Sometimes it's a warning that um a bad thing has happened or just it being there is a bad thing. There's so many different different stories about them. Um I think the last the last show we did on cryptids, there was one that apparently um burst through a church door and attacked a lot of people in the church and you can still see the claw marks and the teeth marks on the door because they've kept the original doors but it's kind of a people have still seen it throughout the years walking around the cliff tops and stuff and you can still hear it howling so it's just uh if you do see it don't hang around <laughs> well i actually bought a souvenir from the witch museum which is uh you can see it on yeah there you go oh, black you go. dog folklore mm. and it's got everything literally let's <laughs> try angle on the camera it's a big book of um, interesting cases and areas mm. where it's been seen it's a really good book that one that's by mm. mark norman again an independent researcher and i think the book was about a tenner you know mm. it's something oh, i've picked up in that museum book. i've got so yeah. many books and stuff on paranormal so i love getting yeah. into it mine i've got a bookshelf literally I've got the, the laptop there bookshelf there bookshelf there the bottom half of this one and this one is all the kids books so you got like um hey dougie books and peppa pig books and this side you've got like goosebumps books and whatever and then the rest of it is either luna's weather books luna's witch books physics books all paranormal and UFO books all jumbled together. So you just kind of take your pick of some, you'll learn something. You'll either learn what Peppa Pig is up to or you'll learn about quantum mechanics. I, I probably need to read mo more of them because I've never, I never managed to find time. I buy all these books with all oh, the best yeah. intentions of reading them, but I never, never find the time around. to actually sit and read them. No, it's like the it's ones fun. I've got. It's like the. Uh... Another one here, isn't it? This is what I'm reading at the minute, Nathan. It's um, the numerical universe. We don't have to believe we can know. That's another. Now, that mm -hmm. is. Phys That's a lot of maths in there. <laughs> it's, mm, uh, just a bit. If, if you, you can't really see because of the light, but there's a lot of stuff, and it's going on about how the universe is made up of numbers and. Mm everything like that and there's a lot of reading but I'll show you it's that. looking got, at another point two. of view mm. let me just find them i'm currently reading two different books at the same time because i can't stick to one subject obviously there's only so much you can sort of watch and read but if you buy the books we read like this one it's someone else's take on like a theory and it's uh, uh, interesting, and it just goes into a numbers and multiple universes. It just makes your brain frazzle. But it's mm -hmm. just a f other person's theory, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've got this one I'm reading at the moment. A lot of people have probably heard of that case, the uh, the policeman. That's, that was obviously retired now, but um, I've only got a few pages in. I've had that a while. I should really get, rid get to around to reading it. Although well, I did get it, you can see, you know, they get it signed. Yep, and then obviously, what slightly how, different what's side. Your belief on? Go on, Nathan. Sorry, I interrupted you. I got there. All about quantum oh, yeah. physics. So this is this is one I'm really interested, really looking forward to starting, but also not looking forward to starting because quantum mechanics hurts my brain. And if it doesn't hurt your brain, you're lying. <laughs> yeah, I think any type reading. I was reading another one by Bruce L. Caffey. And he's written mm. a multitude of books. I think he's passed away now, but he's written a multiple. And he he talks more on um, the vibrations. If you watch mm. it on YouTube, that'd be one for you to watch later. Um, he actually predicted the atomic bomb test just by using his mathematical theories. And mm. you know he's worked it out. And the actual CIA, he's Australian, but the CIA contacted him and wanted him to work on as part of them to sort of predict all these things. He said guys i'm not doing anything you know unnormal i'm literally yeah. working out a um like an equation of when the next bomb is and he actually yeah. basically okay prove it 
and he's out by a fraction of a second when this bomb went off. And they used to do the test back in the 50s of these atomic bombs. And it's this stuff he had worked out, equations. And it's just crazy. But, um, yeah, it's really worth looking into. He's a UFO, ufologist as well. So he, mm -hmm. he does believe in UFOs. Mm -hmm. um, and he's written a lot of books about them. But, uh, yeah, Bruce L. Caffey, he's another one you want to look up. Mm, definitely. I'll add, his, uh, I'll add his books to the long, ever-growing list of books I need to read. <laughs> I, need, I think I need a new bookshelf. I went through them all and made them all look nice and neat so they weren't stacked on top of each other. Threw away some of the kids' books to make space for my books, and now they're starting to stack again, so I'm like, <laughs> and I might need a new bookshelf. Get, get Kindle, and it's all on your phone then. That's what I've started doing. Yeah. So getting now being told off and <clears> buying all these books, so I'll just get Kindle now. And audio as well. Audio books good. Yeah. I would. I would get moaned at for buying all these books, but I make sure that I buy Luna a new witch book at the same time. So she's like, oh, a new book for me. I'm like, yes, I can buy some more books. <laughs> I'll tell you i get away with it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, so, do you want to walk us through some of the weird stuff you've had going on at home? Because I know uh, you said you haven't okay. had much time to go out and investigate because of work and whatever. Yeah. So the paranormal um, came to you, apparently. Um, I think it might have already been here. Or, like I say, I've, we moved into this address in 2000, April 2020. So it was just before lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, we signed the contracts literally the week or locked up. We didn't think we were going to get it. Because a lot of people were saying you can't move house. So anyway, we managed mm. to. We had to sign on the same day. It's really weird. No one helped us move in. It's just me and my wife. We had to do everything. Um, we had some help from the family. But apart mm. from that, no one wanted to help us. As I say, the whole COVID thing was up in the air. No one wanted mm. to see anyone to, in case they caught it or get fined. So we pretty much moved in. So once we moved in, um, I, didn't, I would say I knew there was something here, but you could feel it in the air. Mm. So it's just like... Something wasn't quite right. And it was like, I was asleep during the day. And um, there's just sort of noises going on in the, the flat during the day, just like, like whispering in your ear. And it's quite mm. loud. So I didn't think anything of it. I just think I was dreaming it. So um, I got the Echo Vox out one day. And I was just asking out, which is that clip I sent you. And um, what I like to do with like Spirit Box or Ghost Box, um, if you're going to ask... Is there anything here? You're you're inviting anything in, pretty much. You're communicating yeah. with anything. So what I've learned to do is, uh, if you want to speak to something specifically, what's there? If there is something there, mm. ask a question like, you know, repeat after me and ask something, or I'll mm. say a color. And I've had blue come through before on this, and a letter of the alphabet or like A B C, and leave it, and then you'll get yeah. a D come back. Anyway, back to this um, case, and um. I was asking out, so I've got multiple of strange noises, which you do get on these. Didn't take it. I mean, that mm. Terry came through. On another occasion, I got, is that Terry? So it's twice I've got my name on this Echo Vox. So I thought, yeah. okay, well, something's trying to communicate. And I did have a friend of mine that passed away a year before. So possibly may have been something to do with him. Mm. Um, <clears throat> anyway, a couple of weeks had passed. Um and I was in the bedroom asleep during the daytime, and I heard three loud knocks going on. Um, literally just three solid knocks on my bedroom door. And there's no one else home because my wife is at work. And so mm. at the time, I was fast asleep. <clears throat> I thought, is that the Amazon man? So I've gotten up in my box of shorts, and Amy orders lots of stuff off Amazon. So normally the case is that the, the Amazon man turns up and there's me at the front door of a towel around me or my boxes on. I literally hide him behind the door going, I'll just take that parcel. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't wake up till about two in the afternoon. I'll come home at like five, seven in the morning and um, literally straight up, straight to sleep. Yeah. So I, I was, that spooked me out. Um, we got our dog sort of 2021, sort of um, same sort of time. Um, ever since then, he's been barking at the wall and the door um to our lounge just bark 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 um and he, he just gets spooked out quite quickly as well and the other interesting time was i was at work and amy was awoken at night by footsteps coming up the stairs thinking it was me this was up 2 a.m in the morning i think it was and um and she opened the door and it wasn't me and that spooks her out and she actually texts mm -hmm. me have you just been home you know, I'm awake. Have you just been? I said, no, I'm in Slough on 
the end before working. I've never been. She goes, well, the front door's locked, and definitely somebody else has come up the stairs with boots on. I said, no way. I said, it wasn't me. And and she got creeped out by it. She doesn't really like staying here on her own. Um, I can imagine. So yeah, we bought we buy a lot of things in charity shops. This like antiques and sort of like old nostalgia stuff because we're more into like the quirky things in our house. Yeah. And I bought this gas lamp, uh, an old. It looks like something an old people saying it's like a flowery. Mm. But I like the old the old things. I, I thought yeah. it looked nice on the stairs. Ever since I bought that, all weird old things have happened. Um, we went to bed probably about a couple of weeks back now. Um, and Amy was just gone to the bathroom to brush her teeth. And I was just I was just getting into bed and I was just sat there upright and I've got Odie comfy, it's our dog. You know, we seats down by our feet. And as mm. she walks out of the room, there's a like this big it's almost like a cloud, like a black cloud. Mm. It wasn't a mass or a figure, it's just like this cloud. It's followed her out the room, and I was just like, "What?" <laughs> it's just really strange. It wasn't my eyes because the light was on. The light was on in the bedroom. Mm. It was on full brightness, and it's just this black cloud. And it, as it sort of followed, it sort of disappeared out through the door. But there's, I, I didn't pick up anything negative. It didn't set the dog mm. off. And then I had um, literally again three loud bangs literally during the night, and I'm just like, "What the hell is going on?" It it's saying, but this time it's like kind of wall. But it sounded like somebody had like, oh, I don't know what, what big like Hulk hands or something. It's literally yeah. bang, bang, bang. And this is again, it's at like three in the morning. And I'm just like going, what, what's going on? And I, I actually set up my camera in my hallway, mm. um, my Sony um, Night Vision Plus camera. Mm. And as I recorded it, I left it running. And there's a mist that comes out of the kitchen and disappears. Um, this literally comes through, disappears, and that's the only thing I've caught on camera. I also that's set up an, well, I set up an MP3 uh, recorder from Ghost Hunting. I was had that mm. recording, and it was going on all night. And I the next day I listened through it with a coffee, and I just skipped it to about sort of mid morning time. Mm. And you can hear weird voices on the actual the MP3 player. It sounds like whispering, and it's not me or my wife. We're both asleep. You can hear mm. us snoring away. We can hear me snoring. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's this strange it's it's mm. it doesn't sound human if that makes sense mm. but um christmas time again just gone um i sat in the lounge and we had the decorations there's not much of a breeze in our flat mm. it's all double glazed windows um but they're swinging like that and then i just said that stop it because at this point i had enough and um, i was yeah. chatting to at the time, I was chatting to a guy called Don Lodge, messaging him, um, and we were having, having a chat about it. And he said, you know, he spoke to people that said, if you just say stop it, they, they react. And it just yeah. stopped. Literally, I couldn't have It was like that. And I was just like, mm. what is this thing? You know, and I was just feeling like, I don't know it's that lamp, because this has mm. been going on since we moved in here. But yeah. it's, the physical things have happened since we mm. had that lamp. I was thinking yeah. I was going to bin the damn thing, but nothing's happened since i said stop yeah which kind of makes you realize if one if it was something negative that meant you harm it wouldn't listen to you saying stop no and if it's just physical things it could be a case of not that there was a spirit attached to the lamp but maybe the lamp has enough there's some kind of energy attached to it that's given whatever was already there extra energy to be able to do physical things mm. So maybe it's just sort of added to it. But we had, we've had, I think we've talked about it loads on this show. I've got weird stuff going on in this house near enough every other day. Although I, I can't, I don't think we've had much recently, which is odd, like touch wood. It's, it's stopped. But we had um, the kids' toys going off at weird hours and things moving across the room. Um, we had a, you know, little play tent things, just like little pop-up thing. One of the kids was in it, and I might sitting on the sofa, just kind of on his phone, and looked up as this tent moved, and it looked like you know, like square base, like someone on the inside had grabbed one of the corners and pulled it in. And so he just assumed it was my son who was sitting in the tent, and then it it looked like he pulled it all the way in, and it was kind of leaning on him, and he started shouting and crying, and saying, "Stop it! Stop it!" So my mate then realised, hang on, 
that wasn't him. He's not pulling that. He's not going to freak out if it was himself. So something was messing with the tent. We've had other toys going off. Um, we heard noises coming from upstairs in one of the kids' bedrooms. They'd been asleep for hours. So obviously Luna, being the, the paranormal investigator, she sent me upstairs. Because <laughs> she was like, I ain't going to have a look. So I had to go and have a look. And as I got to the our daughter's bedroom, one of her toys just fell right in front of me. So I was like, okay, if there is something here that's obviously playing with the kids' toys, because that was, at the time, that was all that was happening physically. Um, another one, Luna, saw a, a tiny person following around the little push chair, got uh, one of my, my daughter's toy push chair, got pushed around the room. So she thought my daughter was there, turned around to say hi, and she the push chair was still moving, but there was no one there. So I literally just sat down and said, if there is someone here playing with the toys, I don't mind you playing. I don't mind you playing with the toys. Just could you not do it while the kids are asleep? And it hasn't happened since. So I think generally just asking nicely <laughs> seems to have worked. Yeah, but we, we've had weird they, stuff. They, they go on sort of uh, certain rules because um, going to past cases, well, I used to work for Paranormal Tour. Well, I say worked sort of or in cases with paranormal tours of my older brother. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of cases where public guys activities happened, stuff's happened, and it was very similar to what happened in the in the flat. You know, things move in, and you sort of just firmly say, stop, you know, leave me alone, mm. and it will stop, but it will come back again. Like At the minute yeah. it stops here, I mm. don't know about light or science to do it, but that is one of the traits it does is make mm. the lights flash sometimes and normally followed by something else, but... Yeah. It's um a lot of cases I've been on with the ghost stuff, um, with mediums as well, um, with the pendulum thing. I don't know how accurate that is and, and how they work yeah. it, but how they communicate, but sometimes they come through the name and it is somebody they used to check with the historic. Yes, there was someone here called yeah. that, but you don't know if they went there and researched it before. Yeah. The actual things I like was when we went to the Neen Valley Railway um, right now, and it's it never been investigated before. So there's about 10 of us that showed up on the investigation because it, the weather wasn't great that night, and they sort of predicted heavy snow. So we went up there before it snowed. Before we get snowed in, we get snowed in. Um, so Neen Valley is a large train yard, and I think it's an old railway line. It's got old locos there. Um, it's never been investigated. It's just paranormal tours went. We need a location. We're going to go there and sort of like check it out before we start selling tickets for this location. Yeah. So I was lucky enough to get in there before anyone else. So it's about 10 people and some other members went and checked it out. Um, so at the start of the night, we got some interesting results. Um, got some knocking, table tipping, that sort of thing. Um, as the night went on, it started snowing. Mm. and uh, me and my brother explored a carriage at the back of the train yard and it's an old world war ii carriage it's really old mm. and it's been restored and um we were allowed in it uh so we sort of went in there sat down we had the medium with us he didn't pick up on anything so me and Stephen walked up to the end of the carriage just having a look around with the camera and we were asking out is anyone here nothing anyway as we turned to walk back towards the team there's only five of us including me and my brother three of them sat there with um john the medium it was an almighty slam um behind us and it's like the old carriage doors that shut on the old victorian carriages we used to have on the mm -hmm. electrified line the old trains yeah. we just looked at each other and went what was that and we didn't run back we just walked very fast like quite quick because um we get back to the radios to find out from the security guards who was in that area with us got back and they, they said oh did you sign my carriage door shut no we didn't and um we got on the radio the security guard he checked the camera no no one was there and it's a secure train yard so obviously i got a lot of metal mm. and stuff in there and i don't want people getting in so it couldn't have been anyone else and he couldn't find anything on the cameras unfortunately didn't see mm. anything shut the door um but it's a sam shot but it was the experience of walking back to the gang it was like something was following you it's like when you were a kid and you're mm -hmm. bunking the train it's like something was saying you shouldn't be here and it sort of 
chased us down the carriage. Yeah. And we only got a, a sense of relief when we got back to the gang. We were just like, whoa. And then we went back to the main building and there's we were, they were doing planchettes and table tipping. It's really, and it's really coming down with snow and proper like atmospheric. And um, they're getting all these energies coming. And it's like, the medium was just like, it's like a, like a bubble of energy. It's just all come in here. And it, 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 he sort of said it's because it's never been investigated. They're like, we're getting attention. You know, we're going to yeah. come in and we're going to prove that, you know, something's going on. And it's a, such a good night. And it's one of the best investigations mm. I did. And uh, yeah. following that was like Marwell Manor as well, which is a good one. <clears throat> um, that's, that's, but last time I went, it, it died off. There's nothing pretty much going on there now. Um, basically because you get all these ghost groups go there, they book it out and it's just literally so many ghost groups going there now. They just, I think they've killed it, whoever's there. But when we used mm. to go there, it was very, very active. And I, I took my wife before we got married and, well, good few years ago now, um, we went there and she actually felt hands touching like on her back, mm. like little, little hands. She got freaked out by that and she sort of said, oh, something started. it wasn't me, it wasn't anyone else yeah. it was sort of in this room and she's, I was sitting next to her and she's like, oh, you know, something's touching me on my back. And I had lots of things going on there, like shoelaces being tied together. And apparently mm. they, it's like in the child's play area. I used to have in this mansion yeah. at Marvel Zoo. And they said, all this stuff's going on. And um, <clears throat> the, the creepiest one I have done is uh, Hellfire's Caves in High Wickham. Mm. And that, there you that go. was... <laughs> So yeah, Hellfire's so, Caves. Um, yeah. That is probably one of the scariest ones I've done. Um, being I think I think I've heard of those. Temple. Yeah, I think we touched we touched on those a few shows ago. I think. Mm. But yeah, definitely a lot of very, dark very stuff. Creepy. Yeah, mm. I mean it was Sir Francis Dashwood, and they sort of mimicked and mocked like the whole Satan thing of it. They like like mm. the Freemasons, but like a yeah. a joke version of them, mm. and. Um, they like to play tricks and get drunk down there. But um, there's also a lot of sinister stuff that happened down there. And it, mm. once I was down in the inner temple, um, it's the top room, and literally just had the exit signs like lit up, the green mm. exit signs. And um, we sort of sat there, and I could see something blacker than black just walking in front of me. And it was just like so dark, and it was just like, you could just see it as a person just moving like a pixelated figure and it's mm. just like i don't know if that's my eyes or enough or anything else mm. but then the medium sort of got knocked over and the medium said oh there's negative energy here and then when the lights came back on a white feather came down from the ceiling and just landed on the floor and we we're just like wow you know is yeah. that and they're all the nasty energy and not that there's a strange mm. smell as well just disappeared and it just felt a whole different room it's just really yeah. strange I think the the really cool thing about mediums, I know there's there's a lot of fake mediums out there that will mm. claim to be a medium so they can talk to your nan for you after she's died for a fee. And that's that's all they do. And they're literally just out there to get some money out of you. They're the kind mm. of people that will research your family name on Facebook before they do your reading. And so they can give you just enough information so you'll keep coming back and keep paying them. But a good medium, they're literally like taking a lighthouse into these um, locations and they just attract any spirits that are near. Not Maybe not necessarily that are stuck at that location, but if they're in that area and they they want to communicate, it's literally like, oh my God, there's someone over there that can actually hear me. So they all flock to these mediums. So generally, if you can find yourself a really good medium that actually knows what they're doing and can actually actually has that gift, they're literally like the best thing you can have in a, a paranormal investigation because they draw things towards them. They attract these spirits. So I need to find myself a good one to come and have a look around this bloody house. The, um, speaking of knocking, I was in the shower a few weeks ago and I heard the quietly on the door i was like i'm in mm -hmm. the shower you'll have to wait i've got my music playing the shower's blasting i can barely hear it and then it knocked a little bit louder and i was like i'm in the shower hang on and then it was like bang 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 on the door and i was like 
Yeah. It's like jumped out, grabbed the towel, flung the door open, ready to tell the kids, will you just stop banging on the door in the shower? Nobody there. So I was like, oh, I'm sure I'm I'm assuming there they've just left and gone and sat in the bedroom. So I looked, no one in any of the bedrooms. Message Luna who's downstairs. If one of the kids just been upstairs, like now they're all out in the garden or in the kitchen or like they haven't moved. I'm like, oh. Well, apparently a ghost needed the toilet or something because something's just been banging on that door for the last five minutes. That's a little bit creepy. But um, even people that have come around the house, like Stacey in the comments, she saw her uh, walked out of the living room and a, a person basically walked straight through her. A little old man that didn't seem to know we were here, just didn't even seem to think the house was here. He just walked straight through from one entrance, from one from the front door to the back door. But definitely some weird stuff going on here, but nothing negative. So I've never had any bad experiences. So it's always a good thing. I think so so far, maybe, you know. I don't know, it's say if Luna sort of does the magic in that, maybe something out there is picking up on that and maybe it's coming in, you know, and this maybe something's connection there or, or something's taking an interest in yourself. Mm. So I know I've been, mm. I've been to many locations, um, a lot of locations to say, like the Rich Museum, like you said, it's haunted. But mm. I've, I've sort of drawn to that vase, thinking that something's there, you know, and I'm not yeah. saying the vase is haunted, but it's something around that vase, no matter where mm. you move it, it's still going on. So yeah. I don't know if it's something out there, it's, you know, coming through. Or you get what mm. they call Klingons that like to come in, and they just they hang around for a bit, and they they just go away. Yeah, heard that a few times as well. Mm. But yeah, so we've had, yeah, we've uh, we've both seen strange things with um, using meditation and stuff like that. And I I had because obviously once I was all more into UFOs, didn't think the paranormal was the thing at all. And then having done more and more research, I kind of slowly found myself where Luna already was into like witchcraft and believing in the paranormal and so I kind of realized hang on there's actually something to all of this so she's doing like tarot cards she bought me my own tarot cards that I'll use occasionally she bought me um, a pendulum so I started using that and actually got some pretty decent answers to questions with the pendulum and uh, being a skeptic I wouldn't believe anyone else using a pendulum. So I'd, I'd have to do it myself. So I know I'm not moving it because it's very, very easy to just a little twitch of your thumb and you can make this thing swing in any direction you want it to. But there's all that, also the, the science behind the fact that you can make you can make things move just by thinking about it. So it wouldn't have to be my fingers moving. It could just be a tiny little twitch of a muscle that you can't mm. see or can't even feel would be enough to start this thing swinging. So just thinking of an answer that you think you're going to get or that you want to get can make this thing move. So once I couldn't a hundred percent believe the pendulum, I stopped using it because I, I want to try and find a way that I can prove these things are, are happening and not something that can easily be dismissed. But, I think so many times Luna's used the tarot cards or I've used them and it's, they're, they're, they're really, it's annoying how right they are. And it's not like, um, I don't believe, you know, if you read your, your daily horoscope in the newspaper, I can't believe that everyone that's born in the same month as me is going to have exactly the same day as me. No, like no the, yeah. it, it doesn't make any sense. But so, it's not all a hundred percent true, but like some of the stuff that these cards will come out with, it sounds like absolute nonsense. You know, I don't get it. I don't know what it's on about. And then a month later, something will happen. And then you'll remember the card reading you got that told you in advance that this was going to happen. You know, like, Oh, that's what it did. I think Luna did one for I'm talking about it in the comments. Luna did one for Stacy. And like, just do it again. And Luna, she's done it herself. Not liked the cards that she got because it didn't make sense, or she didn't like what they said. So she, oh, I'll just do it. Do it again. Shuffle the deck. Draw it again. Got exactly the same cards. And like, no, this is the message I wanted to give you. 
this is the message you're getting. Don't try and shuffle and do it again. These are your cards. And then they turned out to be right, which is weird. So there's definitely a lot the... to... Oh, sorry. Have you have you tried Dowsing Rods at all? I haven't. I'd like to. I definitely yeah, think Yeah, I've got a set up just, just behind me on my paranormal shelf. <laughs> I've got um, the Dowsing Rods, and um, they do work. Their their means yeah. is hold them up like that, sort of bend your elbows, and just mm. if you walk, I walked around our garden. I said, "Show me water." I didn't think mm. it would happen, and it sort of just it sort of just moved like that way, and yeah. then you sort of go that direction, and then it actually took me to a disused paddling pool which we use for our dog mm. in the summer. I mean, these things came from Amazon. I was just like. Give these a go, mm. you know, go in the garden mm. and show me water. And they sort of went left, walked left towards the fence. And when they crossed near where I was, it wasn't exactly mm. on it, but it was near enough. Yeah. They sort of went in slowly. They just sort of went like that. Mm. And I looked down. I knew the paddling pool was there, but I didn't know it had water yeah. in it. It's just been empty. Mm. It's just been disused since the summer. And it, it did have water. It had rainwater in the bottom. Mm. And I was like, right, okay. <laughs> now I'm intrigued, yeah. you know. I mean, it's mad because, really like, so. Scientists will tell you that dowsing rods are nonsense, but they'll also use them. Like no, the water I'll board will them. use them when they're trying to find water pipes and stuff. Yeah. Like, so it it's a thing because they the people that work with water will use them to find water, even though they're mm -hmm. nonsense. They'll happily use them. So we were, I think we if were I was ever going to do, yeah, <clears throat> if I was ever going to do my own um, paranormal investigation, I would love to do one with nothing electrical, no electrical tools at all. So, like... No, this way. Um, put stuff like uh, coins on a piece of paper, draw around it, put it down, leave the room, see whether the coins move. Um, flower around the floor, see if there's any any footprints, handprints, anything that's been left in the... Or, like, you know, a cup of water, so you just put a drop on the flower. Little things like that and dowsing rods, that there can't be any electrical interference, or you, it makes it a lot less arguable for sceptics to be like, oh, that's just this, or that's just that. And like, <clears throat> I'd love to do very, uh, something that they'd do before, like, you know, 1950s or something, if they were going to do a paranormal investigation back then, what would they have used? Mm. So, I definitely want to get well, one. Well, it's scouts. Point. They they showed us this like they said go in the woods and get a twig. So he's going there and get a twig, and there used to be like a Y shaped sort of twig, and you used mm. to hold the bottom ends of it, and you used to walk around. So it's like, and when the stick went up and down, they're near water, and they taught you that at scouts. Yeah. So that's just another interesting thing but from a quite a young age you know, mm. coming up and how to survive in these situations and camping. Yeah. The fact that I was shown that a while ago, and I completely forgot about when using these wads, mm. but. Just dawned on me at Scouts, it was the same thing with, with twigs in the woods. They used to go, No, mm. this is dousing, this is how you find water. And that was interesting. Yeah. Which they wouldn't show you while they're teaching you how to survive no. if they knew it was nonsense. Because then if you if these kids ever got lost in the middle of nowhere, they'd be like, I know how to find water to survive. Let's get a stick and just follow that. Like it wouldn't work if it doesn't work. They, they mm. could have then endangered that kid. So it's obviously a thing, but it, according to science, it, what, how could a stick tell you where water is? How could two rods <laughs> tell you where water is? It doesn't make sense, but it works. Mm. So there's a long of other things like pine cone. I mean, that's nothing, mm. nothing paranormal, but if a pine cone mm. opens up, it closes, it rains. It's the sort of mm. things. I'm nearly 40 years old now, but we're talking probably early 90s, late 80s. Mm. Or I used to go to Scouts. So it's a, you probably won't get it now. If you take your kids to Scouts, it will all be iPads probably or electronic stuff. Yeah. But back then it was, you know, play in the woods, go find this, build a tent, you know, and they taught you things like that, which was really interesting. Yeah. Basic knowledge, yeah. I guess. I think, uh, I think more people need to learn some basic survival skills. And some paranormal investigating skills. Let's start that mm. school. We'll start a club. All these people can send their kids and we'll teach them how to go ghost hunting. 
I'm actually going to a spiritualist church in Cambly. I've um, been mm-hmm. chatting to a lady there, and I've told her, basically saying, I've got stuff going on in my flat. I've got an interest in the paranormal with stuff. She said, we'll pop down for one of our evenings, mm-hmm. and um, we can talk to you about it. I didn't think anything of it. I haven't actually spoke to her in a while, and she only messaged me about two weeks ago, saying that, you know, we'd like you to come to a spiritualist church and um, to see if you've got anything going on and see if you've got any sort of skills you you, you can develop. Because mm. I have seen, like, on the investigators, I've seen things. I've got photos of things that's on camera, but the things I see at the corner of my eye or my peripheral vision, mm. you sort of see it, and it's like, something's there, and you go to look at it, and it's not there, but you can see it it's there um it's like yeah. my mum's old house at kenilworth road it was haunted by a guy called percy who passed away there but his wife died in hospital and according to a neighbor who she was well like basically is known as a sensitive and uh, she picks up not quite medium but it's a sensitive mm-hmm. and she used to see him and i uh, used to think she was do lolly because uh, again it's like the tim foil hat thing yeah. but i lived there with a friend of mine and um we just we looked after it for my mum and it's the next door neighbor. She's an old lady and she's come back. So, oh, I saw Percy today. And you sort of go, oh, Percy's dead. You know, he ain't lived here for ages. Mm. And um, I also had an interest in the paranormal, but I didn't want to say anything in front of my mate because he was just yeah. out white. Nothing like that exists. You know, he drove a Beamer and sort of worked in an office and had no yeah. belief in it, had no interest. So I just sort of played along with it. I was like, yeah, it's probably nothing. She would, you know, seeing things. And, um, I was at home one day and I literally came down the stairs and um, turned right and you could see a figure in the kitchen. Uh, again, I was home on my own. Uh, this was years ago now. And, um, walked down. There's like a, a guy there, dressing gown on, stood by the, oh, looked like he's making a sandwich or something. And um, mm. I, was, I was literally just come down the banister, went to turn right. There's a full figure there. And the best way I could describe him is if you've seen the AHA music video, is it? Um, yeah. The, the cartoons like the gray uh, take on me take on me that's the one yeah very similar to that it's like very sketchy not a full figure but it's like somebody mm. drawn him in the kitchen and it's just mm. and they just poof rent didn't even look at me acknowledge me just sort of just mm. sit there like that and um just disappeared and i was just like wow you know and there used to be like shuffling off slippers in the hallway mm. my ex-girlfriend stayed there once and i literally went up to the uh kebab van up the road and she texted me going can you come home i can hear shuffling and again she she wasn't into that she was into things like tarry and reality tv mm. shows she had no interest in the paranormal but i never told her that i was i just sort of just kept mm. it. she had no i watched things like the x files but she didn't really take an interest in it yeah. she texts me she said come home now i can hear shuffling there's no one in the house it's really freaking me out but home. nothing major happened and you know and she goes i'm really scared i don't like staying here on my own and it's mm. just like okay what do i say but my brother mm. had things happen in that house as well but he used to go on investigations he thinks he used to bring stuff back who used to follow him back he went to a lot of places more than i did anyway but i i, mm-hmm. I literally helped out with these investigations i wasn't like a full member of the team i was lucky mm-hmm. enough to go on some good locations but yeah he thinks he might have brought things back mm-hmm. may have followed him back and the weirdest one was we were around there a few weeks ago and um we we're chatting about sort of ghosty stuff and i, I wrote it up on my facebook page but he described what he saw as like a cousin it and um he said it's just going on the same thing like cryptids and all that thing coming from another reality he says there with his friends sat in the room he had he went to i think it's cornwall or somewhere and he he went investigating but he said he's just there and his thing was sat the corner of his eye looks like it wasn't there and he looked back at the tv it was there and he said it's like cousin it but without the sunshade just stood there (laughs) he's just laughing at it because he didn't know what it was i mean stephen's been into all this he's not so much now because his wife doesn't really like him yeah. sort of dwelling in it but um he's just laughing going there's something in the corner of this room he's looking at me and it's just, yeah this this furry figure and i was said to him when we were around there and dinner with with him i was, it was said you know what do you think it was he goes i don't know he goes it's just another another weird experience i've had hmm. so strange things it's not always a figure or anything yeah. i mean it could be a blob of jelly or something you know mm. 
Oh, I, just, I can't explain it. I mean, when we go on another subject, sort of explaining it and find out what it yeah. is. So we've had my paranormal history, should I say, started with very much same kind of thing, dark figures, silhouettes of people out of your peripheral vision, which most people will tell you is just a trick of your life, just you're always seeing a shadow or trying to make, it, make a shape of it or whatever. So I always kind of put it down to that. I saw it at my mum and dad's house when I was younger. No one else ever saw it. So apparently it was just me having these, seeing these shadows moving around the hallway. But it was always past the same door. So I thought maybe it was just someone walked past the front door and the, the light bounced around or something. So I kind of wrote it off. I asked a few people, like my parents, my brother and sister, did they see it? No. Okay. So I just kind of assumed it was just me. The day I moved out to move into Luna's house, my mom I was moving the last box and my mom was like, did you just come past the door? I was like, no, I was outside. She was like, I just swore I just saw like someone about your height, but like a shadow walk past the door. I was like, told you it wasn't just me. Told you there was something here. And then the same day as I moved into Luna's house, she saw the same thing in her house, but it walked past the door as if it was going into a cupboard. There was like nothing there, but it just walked casually straight past the door. So we had weird things. We had what we called the gropey ghost because she had her boobs grabbed on the stairs and I was brushing my teeth and something. Two hands walked up behind me and grabbed my ass. And I turned around laughing, thinking Luna was there and she was downstairs. There was there was no way anyone like ducked away or anything. Like, it was, that was weird. And then we moved in here and I've seen the same thing here. Um, Luna saw it. The kids have seen it. The kids' friends have seen it. And then I did uh, the CE5 thing a few years ago and saw what looked like the same thing, the same kind of dark silhouette sort of figure. So I was like, okay, is that the same thing? Is it just a coincidence that it looks sort of similar? So I did meditation at home and kind of tried to speak to this because I kept seeing the same thing every time I did meditating. So I kind of tried to say, look, you know, if you want to speak to me, you you know, if that, you're just trying to get my attention. Now you know you can. Mm. And I haven't seen it since. Like, I haven't seen it walk past the door or anything. So if it was just something that I was seeing out my peripheral vision, I haven't seen it in 18 months. So why, did, why was I seeing it every few days? And now suddenly I haven't seen it in 18 months. If it was just a shadow, why is the shadow not happening anymore? So it comes in right it's, it's like here i mean nothing's happened in a while but um i'm wait, i'm just waiting for something to happen again you know you, you know it will and you sort of have a yeah. feeling but have you ever tried scrying? After your light flickered. oh yeah but have, have you have you tried scoring at all do you know what scoring is yeah yeah we've done a bit the black black mirror or mm. a dark crystal have you ever tried have you had any results from that at all not really, but again, I think it might be a case of we seem to have we seem to have pinned down when we get the most activity. It seems to be between July and the middle of November. So, like, it seems to get more and more towards. I know it sounds kind of corny to say, but more and more towards Halloween. Mm -hmm. And then after around the end of October, beginning of November, it kind of fizzles out again and then there's nothing for a few months and then we'll get to like end of june beginning of july and it'll start picking back up again so so there's a sign yeah. like um they sort of say the winter and the summer solstice you know and mm. maybe there's something along that basis when we look at it maybe there's i mean i don't keep a a date or time on when why events mm. happen but um I'll just if you I was to record it, it might be interesting to see if it falls in certain periods like mm. that. You know, maybe like the, where they sort of say the veils thin at Halloween, don't they? Yeah, so that's when they will come over. It's like the day of the dead in Mexico, they come over and the yeah. veils thinner. Mm. Luna said, I swear I can keep uh, I keep seeing a change in light on the wall behind you. Yeah, I've got um, a dark room this house like i say things happen 
and um but i'm on camera i can see what's behind me and i've had it before not in this house but i've had it in the place where i lived in newbury years ago um i was in a room chatting to a friend of mine on uh, myspace if you remember that old social yeah media platform i remember I was chatting to him on there yeah and she said that there's a figure there's someone behind you who's that and she's like raving going hi my name's you know kerry and um and I was like, are you talking to? There's no one here. I look behind, no one was there. She goes, shut up. And he goes, Seven, definitely behind you. There's a, there's a guy behind you. I said, it's not. And nothing was there. I couldn't see anything. And after that, she just went, wow, it must be a trick of a light or something. But it's definitely a guy. He had like a tracksuit on. I was just like, you're winding me up. But since then, you know, she's always never mentioned it again. She got quite freaked out by that. Yeah, not to freak but, you yeah, out, but she said, Luna said she can see it right now. There's something behind you. <laughs> it might, if it's red, it could be the headphones, gaming headphones, maybe reflecting off something. But yeah, you, you might see something to say. It's, I've got the hallway light on, but <laughs> there's no, it's just me in the flat. Yeah. I had to pop the wife tonight because um, I said to her, I'm doing a chat with uh, Nathan on the Paranormal podcast, and she's, sort of, she's with her dad at the minute. Uh, at my mm. dad's house, so I bought her two bottles of wine to enjoy. <laughs> I was all chat around sober, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, a very all, strange place. I yeah. said to your right, as in closest to what because obviously the camera's backwards, so would it be that side or the one closer to me or the other side? Oh, there's a window behind point. me. This something outside there's a light out there there's a, there's a street yeah. light yeah but then again that shouldn't be it. moving unless there's something between the light and your wall that shouldn't be changing the shadow uh, that's my front room uh, it's got the hallway light on and if i can move it in there okay they said not the side of the window the bay the window yeah so it's that side, side. So. Yeah, so if it's that side, that's the side of the dog barks at. Mm. Um, that's what we call the elephant wall because it's got elephants on it. You might be able to see the elephants. <laughs> well, I templated them on there. But that's the wall where the um, the knocking came from. Um, mm. Odie will sit on the couch by the bay window and bark at that wall all day long if he had a chance to. So mm. he, I don't know if he sees something. But that wall's, yeah... Amy said that is the same rule. She doesn't like sitting on the sofa there because I don't know. <clears> she gets a bit freaked out. So maybe it's something on that wall, but um, I've never had anything happen to me yeah. on there. It's always been somewhere else in the flat, really. Mm. Mainly the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Things happen. There shouldn't be. I can't see. No, obviously, you've got no no other lights on other than the monitor in front of you. I can't see that putting shadows on the wall. No, I mean, I can well, even lights. They up. didn't even say it was shadows. It was lights. So that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. it, Spooky it's... paranormal behaviour caught on camera. Well, the flicking of a light earlier, say that happens like the decorations, it's normally like a oh, I'm here sort of thing. I mean, you tell it to stop yeah. and it stops. But I don't know if that's because of that podcast. I did one with my friend on Shanto on Snapchat and she actually recorded it and there's actually voices, but we don't know if they came from my end or her end mm. because her house is active. And there's chatting, and you can clearly she played back. She goes, What's this we got? And it's, you can hear another conversation taking place almost. And it's like mm. a, a whisper, like it's almost like answers back to our questions we we're chatting to each other about. Yeah, that was weird. And she's recorded that on mm. Snapchat. We're just having a chat like you and me are having, and there's just like another yeah. voice going on. And she thinks it might be more her end than my end, yeah. but she could be right there because she's had mm. a lot of strange stuff happen. That's, That's the one that lived near Canuck Chase as well. Mm. Yeah, and Linda said, literally behind you on the chimney breast next to the bookshelf, it was white. So it's not a shadow, like you're blocking the light. It's just there, and something white keeps appearing, apparently. Yeah, I'll have to get the old egg done. Something out later on. I've got the, um, the laser grid, which in here you set up, and it's, everything's like a, mm. a, a green dots everywhere. So I haven't tried it out yet. Maybe I'll give it a go later. <laughs> Mm, definitely worth a try. 
I was wondering if I'd just turn that hallway light off, but then you wouldn't see me because it's you'll just go black. <laughs> yeah, but it, again, like from the angle that the light's coming from over there, you shouldn't be casting any shadows or moving lights on the wall. So no, so just to point out, I mean, I'll, I'll turn it here. So that's the hallway, hallway door. As you see, the hallway doors there. There's a light outside. So if I I stand here. I'll move the camera back to that chimney breast. Yeah, that should me then if be it, a, if it's something a shadow out there, isn't but, it? Yeah. So, like, so I'm, I'm literally waving. It's yeah, it's still not really doing a lot. <laughs> you can see me there. So the lights there. Yeah. And yeah, even I'm waving both mm. hands around now. And if I turn that off, yeah. maybe. But again, they, it wasn't meant to be a shadow. They said it was a white kind of light. So I'll, I'll keep the light off. Something, something else might happen. Mm. Just to creep it out. At least then more. you might be able to see the light on the wall a bit better. Well, so. Yeah, so you can see my shadow yeah. there, look. Mm. And that's from the screen from the laptop. Yeah. So if something else white pops up behind you, we'll be able to see it better. This is a first. We've got you know now it's a <laughs> on the show. <laughs> You know, it's a shadow there now because I'm sitting in front yeah. of the laptop. But if something white appears, you'll see it. Mm. Say hello if you're in here. You want to make a knock or something. No. Yeah. I was going to say, don't ask them to stop yet. Let's catch it on video first. Then you can ask them nicely to stop. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, yeah, I'm the you know, only one in the flat at the minute. You sent me <clears throat> some pictures, Ellie. Do you want to have a look through the pictures? Yeah, let's go for it. I'll, uh, let me just get rid of this off the off the screen because they're kind of splitting down the middle. Where are we? Uh, da, 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 that one. There we go. So we've got some some UFOs, some paranormal. I think one of the paranormally pictures was one you mentioned the last time you were on the guy in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That and was caught at Bisham Abbey. Yeah, unfortunately, you hadn't got the picture with you last time, but then you sent it me afterwards, and it is very, very creepy for anyone that hasn't seen it. So uh, I think that's one of the last pictures on the slide. I um, I zoomed in so people can see it a little bit better because they might have a, a rather small screen. So we've got some odd shapes in the sky. So these are taken literally on my front door during the first lockdown, the the literally mm. first lockdown when we went into the the airport shut down everything was not in the sky um i was outside having a cigarette because i was smoking at the time and i was just looking up and i could see a shiny thing in the sky and i was sort of started taking photos from my camera just thinking it might be a balloon or something mm -hmm. and i caught these images here um they're actually taken from a video but they're the still images um so yeah first it appeared like that it's like a white Mm. objects up there and it sort of transferred into that more solid structural sort of yeah it's very bright thing. and it it is and a friend of mine nigel white who's an a photo analyst I'm trying to get my words right tonight <laughs> he's gone through it and he's done all the different color techniques and he's saying it's definitely mm. not a balloon it's definitely not a plane and he's asked me where was it taken and i, and I you know, I've sent him all the information and he said it's really interesting that he goes, he couldn't explain what it is. Yeah. The way the fact it's it, gone from a bright object to a dull object, it's just strange. Yeah. I think the fact that <clears throat> it's definitely not a plane. If it was a balloon, it'd have to be, a, it'd have to be a reflective balloon. So a foil balloon. But for the fact that it went from bright to dull, with it being mm. that sunny. If it's foil on both sides, it'd be reflective on both sides, so it'd just appear bright. So then you'd have to have it's something that's dull on one side. Yeah, yeah. and then that there. And then again, once you what get, I saw once you get my closer, eyes. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Once you get closer to it, it's it's got definitely got some more solid structure than you'd think. Not that that ain't a that's balloon. A, is it? Uh, no, that was a different um, location. That one. That was actually on the. Um, what do I call it? The ranges behind us over. Oh, the, a, we got like uh, military point. ranges. Going back to this one, Stacey's just raised a good point. One proof that it's definitely not an aeroplane. You were in lockdown. 
Yeah, exactly. There's no planes. I've got a time. I've got a time stamp on that as well, Nath. So yeah. it could prove yeah, that all I was the flights taken. had stopped. And it most of the most of the balloons and stuff they get released from birthday parties and things like this. No one was having birthday parties. No one was celebrating anything because no one could go anywhere. No, so this is literally the, been, like I say, we moved we moved into a flat uh during lockdown and it was literally it was the summertime and I was outside, I was having a cigarette and I was just like mm. and funny enough, it was really weird. I know it's gonna sound strange, but I was actually listening to um uh texting Paul Sinclair on um mm. Facebook chat. At the same time, I was doing it. We were talking about something different. I can't remember what we were talking about. We just happened to be chatting on the Facebook mm. Messenger. And also, I had a chat with him. I was, sort of, I was downstairs. I said, I was off a cigarette. I had a cup of tea and I stood there. And that, that thing appeared. And I was like, Look, could it be a balloon? And as I watched it go through the sky, it was, it looked like a balloon, but it wasn't, mm. you know, and it moved very slowly. And it was a cloudy day. And it was a little breeze of wind. And it was not enough to sort of, but this thing was moving against the wind. It was sort of going over yeah. the flat. And and it stopped at one point and sort of just hovered over the flat. And I went, shit, I'm going to get my camera, my digital camera, my mm. Nikon. I ran upstairs, typical story, come back out, gone, not there. Yeah. As and that always. was blue sky then. The clouds had gone. That thing was, I looked out my top window because yeah. we live up the upstairs flat, looked around everywhere. I've got 360 degree, we live near town centre, but we've got 360 degree from our flat windows. Mm. Nothing, I couldn't see it in the sky. It's just it's gone, yeah. but it wasn't moving fast right. enough just to shot up, you know, to disappear yeah. slowly. I was literally about a second. I ran upstairs, always got my camera on the shelf, whipped it out, mm. ran downstairs. Point, no, oh, where was it? Couldn't find it, just disappeared. Yeah. Always the way, it's just strange. Yeah, that one. see that one there was taken in the same location as that previous image you just showed the dark object. Mm. That was well, over that um, Ash Ranges. Yeah, that was over Ash Ranges in uh, Mitchett, <clears throat> which is about 10, uh, sort of five minutes up the road. Again, a military location. Um, mm. I was walking the staffy my friend Will had, and I was walking him, and I was just taking photos of the sunset. And that was in the distance. So that's a zoomed-in version of it. But mm. there's a strange thing in the picture. I just happened to zoom in and blow it up, and that's what I got. I've changed mm. it to black and white to try and get the features, but it's yeah, looks like definitely. a drone, but there's no one else up there. But it's just really strange. Yeah. It looks like the bottom, the bottom of a, a beach ball. It does, doesn't it? You know, the it's little just, circle at the bottom, and then the seams coming up the side. Mm. Oh, we got another. I think that might have been the first one. Just closer. There we go. This one. This one was pretty interesting as well. You probably. So, uh, uh, won't be able to see much on this without I did I have zoomed in on it as well on another picture. It's hard. Yeah. It this hard is taken at Berry Conway. Yeah. Uh reportedly one of the most haunted castles in the UK. Um and I've got good friends down there um who go down there in a lot. Uh this is around about 2010. We we're walking down the catacomb valley below, pointing the camera up, and we've got this image of a figure. Now, all that's there is a steep drop. It's, you see the steps on the top right-hand corner. You can't get any access down from there or up because it's a sheer drop to the valley below. Mm. Um, and it's all slippery up there. There's no reason you have to walk around that castle to get down to where I was. And that figure there, if you blow it right up and change the details, it definitely looks like a figure mm. stood there. It looks like someone holding down. a bag or carrying it's something, odd. maybe. <clears throat> Yeah, that one was an unexpected. We didn't expect to get anything. We're just taking a dramatic photo of the castle yeah. above. But yeah, that one I caught out, and I was like, "Well, what's that?" And that one's a strange one as well. Mm. That's actually my security camera at the back of my garden, but it's illuminated. Not just the, the area it is, but if you look, there's a shed in the garden next door, and it's yeah. up the whole. I'm saying that uh, the whole area. The lunar, after you sent me these pictures earlier, I pointed that out that you can see the side of the shed's dark and the front's lit up. Which yes, obviously. I mean, that's a, for a me, 30 pound, yeah. So obviously, yeah, for me, I don't pound know, pound yeah. I don't know whether that shed's lit up normally, 
So like that to me, I, I couldn't prove anything with that. That's more proof for you because you'd know that usually seeing this camera or seeing this footage, that there's not normally any light there. So no, that's why I screenshot that one because I was actually at mm -hmm. work that night that happened, and the motion detector went off on my uh, webcam because mm -hmm. I installed a webcam out the back because we had gypsies that moved in, um, and I've got a shed with all my tools in, which I don't really want taken. So I, I stole the camera up behind us, and I've got one out the front, and um, this thing was going off. I was at work, and I was like, "What's that setting that off?" And I've looked at it, and there's this thing appearing. I thought it was an insect at first, and when I actually played back the video, it disappears from nowhere. It lights a whole garden up and disappears. Mm, I have to try and find weird. the video again. It's got the date yeah. stamp on there. I mean, it was at 2.44 a.m. Again, it, it's weird. Mm. These things happen around about 2, 3 in the morning. It's just bizarre. Mm. There we go. This one. This is the really, really cool picture that yeah, I showed this to, to Luna after you were talking about it on the last show, and she was like, "That's <clears> weird." <laughs> so I'll talk you go. through this one. So the guy, the guy in the picture with his arm out, that's Stuart Keys, which is one of the mediums we used on our investigations, and this is at Bisham Abbey in Berkshire um, the weekend before we did an investigation there, and he was doing a chat and as he's got his hand out, he's picking up on an energy. He's saying, you know, this is from the investigators one that weekend. They were telling us he was picking up on something, but he couldn't quite describe who he was picking up on. Mm. What, what it was, because it's definitely something in the room. And obviously someone who's taking a photo of him is caught back. Now these mirrors in the background, they're about three or four foot off the floor. They're right at the back and they're like the old mm. style mirrors that stand quite way up. So in length rays, I'd probably say they're about eight foot in length because they're like mm. Victorian mirrors. <clears throat> they used to have them in libraries and I don't know, it used to suggest like wealth and power and that, but they used to have it. It's a big old mansion and they used to have they had it in the library. And he's about a few feet off the ground, arms down, looking out. And if you, mm. I've played around with that photo so many times, there's a guy with a moustache and it's just, he looks very, old like an old librarian or bookkeeper mm -hmm. and he just appeared in that photo and it that's probably the best evidence i've ever seen or something and i can't yeah. explain what but the guys mm -hmm. there that night said no other camera picked it up so the guy in front with the camcorder he didn't get anything either this is that one person just having to take that shot who mm -hmm. caught it at that time very strange i think again i'd that would make me go back and put people in as many different positions as possible to try to catch someone at an angle that may have been out of the shot or something. But that would just be just so I could prove it definitively to myself that it's yeah. 100% weird and not just an accidental trick of the light and you've caught someone's, someone was walking past at just the right angle and you'd caught it. I'd want to be able to rule out everything. But generally, that's weird. <laughs> it is because it's sort of just looking out the mirror and yeah. considering we if, that there. Was, if that was just an angle and the reflection of someone that was just outside of the shot, they with the where their hands are, he'd have to be pretty close to that mirror. That's what I mean. If it was a reflection of someone, so you'd think he'd be in the shot. With how close it'd have to have been to, for that to just be the reflection of someone that was in the room, so it I don't know. I definitely have to have to play around with it myself. I think, but it's uh, definitely a strange one. That peculiar, yeah, very interesting. But that that abbey is used as a uh, not as a, it's like a a function room now. So all the rooms mm. there are like boardrooms. Um, and they did paranormal investigation. I think most of these paranormal teams just choose locations, which I've had stories from, and they just go there and expect something to happen, and they just mm. charge you for the privilege of it. I mean, I've been to a lot of places which nothing happens, and it's 30 quid, you know, yeah. 30, 40 quid to go on investigation, and nothing happens. A lot of people go, oh, that ain't real, nothing happens. You know, they're expecting to see mm. something like ghost haunt, like go most yeah. haunted or something, or ghost adventures mm. to happen, but they don't realize that's all TV, it's all designed yeah. for viewer ratings if you mm. most of the time nothing will happen 
but you just mm. got to be lucky when it does happen. Yeah. I've, I've been fortunate a there. few times. It's happened. Yeah, you, you could go to the same location 75 times in a row and nothing happens. And then the 76th time, loads of stuff happens. You know, it's, it's one of those things that's... There's no guarantee and just because somewhere may or may not be haunted or may or may not have something going on, there's no guarantee that it'll happen just because you're there and you want to see it. Whether it be actual spirits or residual energy that's just repeating, there's no guarantee in that they're going to want to do something because you're there if it is a spirit. They're not performing mm. monkeys. They're not there to amuse no, that's you. that's it. And I think most of the time, that's what it is. If you go to these places and you're sort of expecting something to happen, nothing will happen. It just, mm. I think it does catch you out. That's your idea of it. And maybe when you're at your, when you're not paying attention, I always found that if you're not there, you mm. don't pay any interest, something will happen. You're like, oh, what was that? You know, and something yeah. happens to sort of trying to get your attention, I guess. Mm. It's like, we are here, yeah. but you know, we're not. Like you said performing monkeys, we're not going to just yeah. dance for you. So I think maybe the best thing to go in to do is go in and be like, "Well, I don't even believe that you're here. I don't want to know. You want to talk to me? I'm not listening." And then they might be like, "Oi, hang on. No, I do want to talk to you. Come here." Yeah, don't believe in me. No, just start slapping you around the head and stuff. But it's the same thing as like with the ghost box I use and the the, mm. the echo box. If you ask questions which they're not expecting, I mean, I, mm. I've had a few people say, "Yeah, ghost box is a." Uh, yeah, you know, I, I use mine in aeroplane mode, and I use the other mm. one just in manual search. I don't they auto scroll. I'll do it myself. Yeah. But I ask questions which are relevant, like like I said to you, you know, color yellow or blue. Something that's hard mm. to get back. You know, something that's going to be yeah. like yes or no, mm. or maybe or something is, is a definition of ask me a color and a blue mm. or green. And it, after a few rubbish answers you will get that answer and it yeah. can't be someone on the other end listening in and replying to you i mean who's going to mm. do that but you've got an yeah. airplane mode you've got the phone dead pretty much no cell phone mm. signal when you get that same sort of that video mm. i sent you my name repeated you yeah know, that was sorry. weird i was just asking out i was saying is anyone here i always got a few rubbish answers and it was just like is that terry and um, that freaked mm. me out maybe neck hairs on the back of my neck stand up on end i was just I like if i can so I'll see if I can wow. quickly find that video and we'll uh, we'll stick it on. It was it was definitely weird and it definitely said Terry. Yeah, it's strange. I, mean, I didn't. I've shown that to a few people and I said, look, I'm not going to tell you what it says. Just listen to it. Mm. And they have all said the same. They said it's definitely it says your name. And it, yeah. again, that's happened in my flat in this flat here. So mm. well, yeah, I hope it's not I a dead you, stalking me. When you posted it on on Facebook. I think I had a, a chat with a couple of people on the in the comments about it. And um, I think generally the app you're using is one of the, one on the list now that I will 100% kind of say, yeah, I need to... I never say, yeah, it's 100% it works, but I'd like to look into it a little Worth bit more. Trying. I'd, actually, I'd actually spend money and time looking into it compared to some that um, I've seen that are just... Um, well, they're just bad. They do. I don't like the way they work. They, um, like the uh, was it, I think it's like called, I think it's called Ghost Tube or something like that. And they've just got like a mm -hmm. bank of words. And in theory, like the, the way they claim that it works kind of makes sense that they use your phone's EMF to pick up signals from your phone and things like that and pick up signals from the spirits to re relay certain messages. Like in theory, it sounds like it works, but then when you look at um, the like I said, the fact that you have to pay to unlock more words, and like, what if the yeah. what if the spirit wants to say one word, but you haven't paid for that word? What if who sat down with the ghost and said, okay, what sign, what vibration, what EMF frequency do you want to mean what word? who translated it with the spirits. So it, it just, I don't know. I don't like that one. The Echo Vox thing seems to be not too use bad. Use it in aeroplane mode. Yeah, use it in aeroplane mode. I find the best results. 
I mean, have a play around. There's YouTube videos on how to use it, but as I say, airplane mode, everything switched off. Just kill your phone I and mean, then use it on location mm. and you'll find the answers. The, the best one, which I will try and send you, Nath, is of email somewhere from my uncle Richard, the guy you're mm. chatting to is my uncle. Oh, the okay. only side of my dad's family is still alive. And um, he talks to a lot of spirits and he's always been into the subject. But there's one, he's tried contacting John, who is my dad, who is his not full brother, but like a half brother. And he said, is John there? And um, it pauses and you get this really creepy, not very nice reply. It says, mm. no, he, no, he's dead. If I can send that to you, you have a listen to that and try and tell me that that's not creepy. I mean, that just creeped me the hell out. <laughs> I was just mm. like, well, I can imagine. Why would someone be yeah. saying that an electronic voice on this device saying, of course not, he's dead. But it's mm. a really creepy way it says it. It's like it's like a AI, but like um, a waspy AI voice replying. Yeah. But Richard's Very got clear. lots of things on those things. He always sends me samples, and I always find it interesting. So I'm just trying to... Uh, trying no, to that's all. I'm just yeah. babbling on. <laughs> <laughs> so if you hear any weird sounds and I'm, I'm trying to get that video to download and it's just trying to bloody play it I'm like don't play it let me steal it <laughs> there we go i found it and just kept constantly like oh do you want to play the video don't play the video let me download the video which i'm not technically meant to do from facebook but you know there are ways i will always find a way right let's see best way to share this would be there there it is i think there we go right let's stick this on i have no idea how it's going to appear on the screen so i'll have to move all of this stuff in a second once it's once it's working just processing so yeah this one was definitely very very interesting like if i heard this well to be fair if i heard this say terry i'd be like you've got the wrong guy but obviously, <laughs> for you, this was weird. Hi guys, this is uh, using the EchoVox app, which is a random generator. Um, it basically just plays random noises by searching through different channels, similar to a ghost box. I've been using this for a while because I have had great results with it. Um, for example, I've been in places which aren't necessarily haunted um, and some places that are and I'll ask a question like a colour, like um, ask me a colour and normally I'll get a reply after a bit of gibberish but I'll get like a colour blue or a colour pink or purple will come back. I'll also say to, I'll, I'll ask out loud and I'll ask give me a number between one and ten and something will come back um, lately I've been using this app and I've been getting my name come back to me um, quite clearly in some terms um, I don't know what or why but you you know this app I've had it um, turning the ball band off or the Wi-Fi off and data roaming and had it in airplane mode and used it and it still comes back with my name and this is one example of a screenshot which um, I'm going to post um, because obviously I can't narrate over the original video but um, obviously you'll see all the stuff at the top that's because I've got my phone on now with the screenshot um, whilst I'm recording this but um, see so what you make of this this is um, quite interesting um, towards the end you'll hear my name um, I'll just play the app through the full recording um, and you can sort of hear the gibberish going on um, and then you'll hear my name at the end which is, as I can say, it's very strange oh. Alright. 
just about hear it there. I've had other times when that's been clearer, but as I say, this isn't a screenshot of a session. I mean, you, you ask me, I mean, is it someone trying to come through? I don't know. But um, like I said, Mm. It was very yeah, uh, weird one. Mm. Definitely said Terry at the end there, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know who it is, though. It's just bizarre. Mm. Very strange. But um, so yeah, it's definitely a definitely an app I'll have to get and uh, have a play with and figure out what I think of it. I mean, experiment with it just. As I say, play around is best bet. As I say, I, I used it in the flat here just on the off chance and something communicated. As I, say, I don't mm. know what it was or who it was. I had a name come through yet. Of, <clears> I've asked out what's your name? Who I've just got silly, silly answers. So mm. whether it's something that just came mm. through and then went back the other end, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> it's just strange. Well, that's twice now that's happened. So. Mm. It's one of those things we don't, we don't have any understanding of what paranormal stuff is we don't have any idea how it works why it works if it works so all the stuff that we try to use to communicate or try to use to make contact or to understand it again we're just guessing we we could be we could be using these apps and picking up on the paranormal and it could be the spirits of loved ones that have passed on or the spirits of just generally other people that have died that are lingering or it could be anything else that we don't understand about the universe. It could be anything else that we don't understand about the way physics works. And we're just interpreting it as the voice of the paranormal. We literally have no idea. And that's why we do it. That's why we keep trying these new things. And we keep trying these new experiments. Or someone has an idea of, oh, let's try and do this. Or let's try and do that. We want to know what it is, and the only way we're ever going to figure that out is by experimenting and trying these things out and see what results we get. So if you uh, you want to do yourself a, a paranormal investigation, get yourself some dowsing rods, get yourself an EMF detector, get yourself whatever you want to try, as long as you think that it's, uh, it's what you want, what you'll... Especially, yeah, if you... I'm trying to think of exactly what to say here. If you, it's hard. <laughs> if, yeah, if you want to, if you want to look into these things, then look into it. But just research first. Don't just kind of grab everything and just I'm a I'm a ghost hunter and just believe everything no. you see. Try to be as skeptical as you can. Research not just what you're looking at, but the equipment you're using, how to use it correctly, how to ignore false positive readings what to look for that might not be a positive reading once you've done your research go out there and find us some more evidence i think a lot of um the tools are just um you can use anything it's like um they, they're trying you go on these sites and they're trying to say like an interactive kids toy a teddy bear mm -hmm. will light up and wave its hands but it's got a camera in there yeah. I don't think mm. it's a I wouldn't use one personally, but like you were saying, I would use something more like the dowsing rods or I've got um it cost me two pounds off Amazon and they're cat balls and they're the ones that light mm. up all different colours. I've got yeah. five for that two quid. Came from China, okay. Mm. But um I've super glued them so you can't open them. And I've literally mm. I've turned them on. I haven't used them yet. I'm interested in using them. So I'm hoping I'm chatting with Matt. And we're hoping to meet up and go down Berry Pomboy. And we're hoping to put them around the gatehouse because that's an active part of yeah. the castle. Set up a camera there and see what goes on. And um, what I'm going to yeah. use is masking tape to stick it down mm. with. Something that can't yeah. move them, but it's touch sensitive. So yeah, just bringing different theories. A lot of them, a lot of them, the, the sensitivity varies on some of them. Mm. So like some of them you've got to like really bash it before they light up and some of them exactly. you could breathe near it and they light up. So well, this then one, obviously 
Jack Russell tested or tested it on OD, and when he bashes it, one it does go off. But yeah. I want to, I want to stick him down with tape. And if something, yeah. I say, show me something. I want something to proper mm. knock it one, you know, to make so, yeah. it light up. Just, just stick some down, <laughs> and then just do some experimenting with it. Tap your finger next to it. Not don't touch because obviously if you touch the ball, it's going to light up. Put your finger next to it. Just tap it gently. If it doesn't light up bang your hand, stamp your feet, mm. just to get an idea of what will set it off. Because if just someone walking in the next room sets it off, that thing's going to be flashing all night long and you're not going to know whether any of it was paranormal or if it was just Dave walking through the door. So you need to... That's always another thing that anyone, obviously anyone else that wants to do these investigations, always get your base reading of anything, whether it be your EMF detectors or whether it be your, your cat toys or whether it be your dozing rods, get an idea of what they're going to do in that area, regardless of whether or not there's paranormal activity going on. And then you've got something to base your, your evidence against just to help shut up skeptics, if anything. Yeah. But it's always like we were saying before. Arguing. Yeah. We always get someone, you know, saying, something else saying you know that could be this but only we know what we know what's going on as like i said before i could be doing this or that and making this happen but it's down to the individual to believe it and if they believe it mm. then exactly. more people will believe it because they get into it but yeah you're yeah. right it's a lot of the tools you buy out there are value, like marketed at silly price and mm. unfortunately it is a selling point but um uh, that video i showed you of waverly abbey of that what we thought was a monk well, i showed you last mm. time i think i sent you a message i mean that was just literally a sony handycam on a tripod mm. and just left recording for 12 odd hours and it was just that, that figure appears and that was just mm. that's just with a sony hand there's no other light just the night vision camera mm. recording and that figure went through the wall and you heard the door shut and no one was near it and that mm. again it's this that was a that camera cost me about 12 quid and a charity shop i just happened to see um one similar sorry not that particular mm. one that was my jvc mm. one i recorded that but i bought one recently which is better than that one i had used all that five oh, years ago and this one was 12 pound from a charity shop came with all the cassettes and it's the old wow. cassette one so you know that nothing's going to happen on videotape and um mm. i bought that for him i haven't trialed it yet but i'm looking forward to trying that as well yeah, Chris has just said I still use old camcorder that uses VHS tapes. Hard to fake the tape. Shuts yeah, exactly. No, yeah, it's a lot harder agree. to fake those things than it is digital. Well, they got the Night Vision Plus Plus, like Super Plus, and I, I had it mm. in the garden the other day. Just because we don't fire these cameras up, there's a little ten p battery, like mm. sorry, ten p piece battery, and all yeah. that they used to do is illuminate the screen. If you don't use it they go dead and they're hard to get out and um, yeah. when you take them out they wipe the memory of the camera but I'll, I'll turn it on now and again just to keep it running and i had it mm. in the garden the other day and i had it on full night shot mode it, the whole garden lights up and mm. like you could sort of make out the moon and the can't see the stars but it would bring up everything and like you had night vision goggles 12 pound yeah. from a charity shop and i think back in their day they were a few bob because they're quite good yeah. cameras but mm. the cameras you get now, all 4K and all this stuff, and they infrared on them is really high. And obviously, that wipes out much of the stuff, natural light. Yeah. So the old cameras are the best ones if you can get them. Yeah, definitely. And I think you could take the a £5 camera from a, a cheap old digital camera, which is like 10 megapixel. You pick them up mm. from eBay, Facebook Marketplace, for like a tenner. And yeah. you can unscrew them, take the lens out, and there's a little red filter in front of the lens mm. um but not behind the chip sort of thing you can take them out with a screwdriver or tweezers put a camera back and you've got yourself a um ultra like an ultraviolet camera it uh, yeah. sees everything all the details of light and they're good mm. if you can do one yeah. of them you're conf confident enough to do that mm. i've got a... it comes up in like a, a negative effect mm. i've got an old camera somewhere again i bought it from a uh a charity shop but I think it was an old Kodak or something, but it was like really good zoom and everything. And it was just sitting on the desk on the on the till at charity shop for a tenner. And I was like, oh, I'll have that. I mean, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't like you know brand new. It was only 
it was basically brand new. Still had all the uh, the little packaging stuff inside the box. It was just old, so it, it wasn't like you know state of the art amazing, but it was basically brand new camera. And its zoom was pretty good. I just used it to take pictures of birds in the garden and whatever, like just daft little things, pictures of the kids. But I've now got a better camera. If I can find the cheap one I got, I'll have to take the little filter off, take it apart. I did learn how to do it. Couldn't remember where mm. I put the camera. Forgot to do it. Still don't know where the camera is. So when I find it, <laughs> I'll try and remember to take the thing apart and, and have a look. I've got one... Um... It's a cheap version. I think it's a, a ape, eight man action cam, and the lenses mm. on them just unscrew and take them off, and then you've got the the mirror lens, like digital mm. one, and literally that's glued. The the IR field was like glued in place, so you just need to get a small knife and just hook it off, put it back on, put the lens back on, and mm. it's great. You can just leave that in the location with a light, and it'll pick up all the natural light. And there's a YouTube video on that on how to do that. Um, I'm hoping mm. to do that as well at some point. I haven't got the fingers for it yet because uh, I've got quite thick fingers. So it's like hard. <laughs> I'm not easy taking small things apart. Yeah. So that might have to be a microscope and tweezers. Mm, to play so I'm all, I'm all thing fingers and thumbs to so just drop everything. I'm not very good with little things. But mm. oh dear. Well, well uh, I think we might have to end it there, mate, because it's we've been yeah. going for two hours, ten minutes. No, it's been great the having a chat. Yeah, enough of these people Sunday evening. <laughs> so, so, well, uh, <laughs> if uh, if you have anything else happen, if that weird white light appears behind you again, let us know. But, uh, That's we'll intriguing me because again soon. I've got to pick the wife up now from a mum and dad's and the dog. So um, I'll actually ask. I'll keep my camera recording. I'm just going to ask out when I go. There's anything here, yeah. and if I forget an answer, I'll post it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it's definitely, definitely something strange in this flat, mm. it's bizarre. Definitely. So, yeah, I definitely suggest keeping that camera running while you're out. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. And so, well, uh, thanks for joining us again. That's right. And, uh, thanks for uh, letting me have being on the show, and uh, thanks for everyone uh, for listening sure. and putting up with my yeah, wabbling thanks on. Thanks for joining us, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for giving us your, 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 your Sunday evening and wasting it listening to us ramble. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure we'll, hopefully you'll all join us again, or join me again next week. And Terry, I'm sure I'll be speaking to you again soon and I hope you'll join us again soon too. Most definitely, yeah. See you all later. See ya. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you.